Hello everybody! Today we'll learn something about bipolar transistors. Transistors are one of the most important electronic devices as they have revolutionized electronics since they were first invented over half a century ago by some smart people. Bipolar transistors are constructed similarly to a diode, just a little more complex. We know that a diode is made up from two pieces of semiconductor material that forms a simple p-n junction. Let's imagine that we put two diodes back to back. This will give us two p-n junctions connected together in a series that shares a p or n terminal. The fusion of these two diodes produces a device that forms the basis of a bipolar transistor or BJT. We can see two types of bipolar transistors resulting from the way that we place the diodes. One will be NPN with the P-doped semiconductor layer sandwiched between the N-doped layers or PNP. For the NPN transistor, the N-doped layers contain free electrons and they are called collector and emitter and the p-doped layer is called base and contains holes. Between these three semiconductors layers will form two depletion regions, just like the one at a normal diode, that are viewed as electric fields that oppose the diffusion process of electrons. Under the current conditions, the transistor will be blocked as the regions will act as barriers that prevent current from flowing no matter how high is the voltage between collector and emitter. However, if a voltage is supplied between base and emitter that is high enough, electrons will overcome the resistance of electric field and flow into the base layer. After connecting a voltage supply between collector and emitter, the small number of electrons flowing from emitter into the base will allow a higher amount of electrons to flow between emitter into the collector. Basically, the small current that we use to turn on the transistor at the base makes a big current flow between the emitter and the collector. By turning a small input current into a large output current, the transistor acts like an amplifier. The current flowing into the collector is proportional with the current flowing into the base. Usually, each transistor has a value of amplification specified in the manufacturer datasheet. The current from the emitter is equal with the current from the collector summed up with the current from the base. As we can see, that all the electrons from the emitter are flowing into the collector and base. A BJT can also act like a switch. When there is no current to the base, there will be no current that flows between the collector and the emitter. Turn on the base current and a big current will flow between the collector and the emitter. So the base current switches the transistor states, on and off. We can see all of this like a set of pipes. We can imagine that the wire is a pipe and the current is water. If current is flowing through a wire, we can see it like water flowing through a pipe. If we block the pipe with a disc, the water will not flow. Now let's add the third terminal, the base of the transistor, shown as a smaller pipe connect it to the main one and place a swing gate in it, which is connected via a pulley at the disc that blocks the water at the main pipe. The water flow in the main pipe will depend on how far the swing gate is opened. The swing gate will require a high enough pressure in the small pipe, therefore a small amount of water won't be enough to open it. The more water we have flowing in the smaller pipe, the more water will be allowed to flow in the main pipe. This is essentially how an NPN transistor works. 
Let's see how we can turn on an LED using a transistor as a switch. First we need an NPN transistor for which we have the base, the emitter and the collector pins. Then we'll need a battery that will be connected between the emitter and collector as the main power supply. We will use a resistor to limit the current for the LED that we are going to light up. Let's wire up the components and then add an additional power supply that will be used as a turn-on supply for the transistor. This separate power supply is to show the voltage drop on the transistor while functioning. If we turn on the power supply, we can see that the LED will turn on depending on the voltage that will be supplied on the base of the transistor. If the voltage is bigger than the opposing voltage created by the depletion regions, then the transistor will open and will allow the current to flow. This threshold voltage at which the transistor will start conducting will also be seen here with a real life example. If we supply the transistor in base with less voltage than its threshold voltage, then the transistor will be blocked and will not allow the current to flow between collector and emitter. If this voltage will be exceeded, then the transistor will allow the current flow. This will be all for this video, but stay tuned for the next videos as we will also explain where we can use a bipolar transistor and how. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe.